Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name is Julia. Today I'm going to be doing my very first Friday reads ever, mostly because it's Friday and I didn't really know exactly what to film because I haven't actually been finishing that many books. So I'm going to do a currently reading because I'm currently reading one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books and normally I am not a poly reader of any description. Well, I normally have one audiobook and one hard copy book. At the moment I've just got so many books on the go and I think it's because I've been struggling to focus and find something that I really want to read. So anyway, I'm just going to go through them and you can tell me what you think I should continue with. So these are in, actually they are in some order. So the, the main one, ugh, the main one I've been reading at the moment is Underland, but so, also excuse my nails. They're very messy because my two-year-old insisted on painting them for me yesterday and I meant to fix them before I started and I forgot. So the main one I'm reading is this one. I'm about two thirds of the way through. It's Underland by Robert McFarland out through Hamish Hamilton. Um, I've talked about this before. So Robert McFarland, nature writer. This is him going all around the world looking at places that are underground. Now, at the start, I found this really captivating. There were some great chapters, particularly the one on the underground tunnels, caves and rooms, chambers under Paris. Found that really interesting. Um, and initially, the, the most of the chapters were sort of him going somewhere in the world to go to a different type of underground area, like a burial site or a mining cave or... Uh, just un natural rock formations, underground lakes, etc. And a local person, so someone who was an expert on the area or a scientific expert in the particular area, like fungal networks or something, underground fung fungal networks that he's talking about, would take him underground and kind of give him a tour and he would describe what they see. And it would then be interspersed with other sort of historical or anecdotal stories about that particular area and how it relates to war or science or research or nature or whatever. So it was really interesting, sort of this mix of storytelling. By the end, so the last few chapters, he's now in Norway looking at sort of rock cave paintings in Scandinavia. He mostly talks about all the mountain climbing he has to do to get to these obscure places. And then um, at the very end of the chapter will be like, oh yes, and then I saw some cave paintings and they were cool. And it sort of felt like what he really wanted to write about was mountain climbing, which of course is his area. Mountains of the Mind was his first book, his most popular. He is a mountain climber himself. Um, and yeah, it just felt like it's sort of lost focus and he's more just interested in like the significance of mountain climbing and how hard it is. And it's like so real and tough and it's nice writing, but I'm like, it's not what the book is supposed to be about. Um, and it f sometimes feels a little bit self-indulgent to me. Um, I'll talk about it more in a wrap up when I finish it. But yeah, that's why I sort of put pause on this one for now because I was getting a bit, I was sort of losing interest, but I will finish it. I'd like to finish it at some point. Another one that I sort of am, what, probably about a third of the way through, I've mentioned this one before. I think I've mentioned them almost all before, not quite, is Mistress of Science by John S. Croucher and Rosalind F. Croucher. I think they might be partners. They're both academics. So the subtitle is The Story of the Remarkable Janet Taylor, Pioneer of Sea Navigation. And this is the story of a woman in the 18th century who did a lot of work developing nautical instruments. And it's sort of just a histor historical text about her life because she is very much overlooked in all the other literature. And it's quite interesting. Like the content is really interesting, but I guess because it's kind of an academic text, it's quite detailed. It's not super narrative driven. Um, so it's sort of reads like it's more of a research or reference book, I suppose. Well, that's how I'm finding it. Um, so it's sort of I just read a bit here and there and I would like to finish it, but it's not one I would I can kind of sit down and just plow through. Um, yeah, so there's that one. So I just started Fire Country by Victor Stephenson, which I talked about in my Springathon TBR, which I'll link down below. Um, this is about indigenous approaches to fire management in Australia, in the Australian landscape. So back burning in the Australian bush or forest, um, and 
yeah, basically how the indigenous approach is looks after the landscape, looks after the wildlife, looks after the people, and might help mitigate the terrible fire outcomes that we have here in Australia, um, potentially as a result. Like they're not just a result. Well, they are a result of climate change, but our land management is not helping the situation either. So I started reading this, but then I got stressed out because I was halfway through all these other books, and I was like, I have to finish some other books first. So I'm going to finish the other books first, and then I would like to read this one. Now, another one, the one I'm probably going to finish first is this cute little middle grade one that I just picked up, The Year the Maps Changed by Danielle Binks. It's out through Lothian. She is an Australian writer. I, she's very well known in the Australian sort of book world as a reviewer, a blogger. She is a very big advocate of YA and middle grade books. She's also a literary agent um, and has, has made you know represents a lot of very successful authors and this is her first book which is really exciting and she and i actually worked together many years ago we were both columnists for the same magazine so i had to go out and buy it as soon as it came out it's out through lothian and it's a really cute little book it's set in the late 90s in sorrento which is a town a couple of hours out of melbourne on the beach um, about a family who lives there and it's set during the time that the kosovo number of Kosovo refugees were rehoused uh, just near Sorrento it, at a quarantine station um, during the war, during the Kosovo war in the 90s. So it's sort of about, it's mostly just about the main character Fred and the, her friendships and her family relationships. So her mum's died and her dad has a new girlfriend and they're having a baby together and it's about her grappling with that. It's also about her um, they meet some, like she and her friends meet some of the refugees and connecting and the, the overarching theme is sort of like maps and like mapping your own personal life mapping yourself mapping places what's the significance of place to people like Fred or you know what's the significance of place to people who are displaced from their home and sort of have to make new meanings from the place that they're in it's really well written I'm really enjoying it I hope to finish it within the next day or so the next one, I, because I was in kind of a reading slump, because I was in the middle of so many books, um, I picked up Withering by Sea by Judith Russell, which is the first book in the Stella Montgomery series. If you've watched my channel for a while, you may have heard me mention this before. I reread this series every year. They are my favourite middle grade series. Judith Russell's an Aussie author, but this is set... Um, the birds outside are really noisy. You might be able to hear them because I've got the door open in here. Um, Victorian sort of magical... <laughs> middle grade novel about Stella Montgomery who uh, is also an orphan and the overarching narrative of the trilogy is that she's trying to find out the history of her family and the magic kind of involved but then in each book there's also kind of like a magical mystery that she solves to their friends they're really well researched really well written love them it just made me feel good about reading again so I will finish it but I, I've read this so many times that I don't feel like I need to sit down and read it quickly. I can just kind of dip in and out when I need to as the mood takes me. So the next one I'm reading is Sea Shaken Houses, A Lighthouse History from Eddystone to Fastnet. I think that's how you pronounce it. Don't know. They're UK towns. Sometimes things are pronounced differently to how they look. Uh, by Tom Van Collars, out through particular books. This is really cool, and I got stressed out reading this because I was like, I'm supposed to be reading Springathon books and I'm reading this, but then I realised I can read this for Springathon because it's got water on the front, which is one of the prompts. And though it's not strictly nature writing in that it's about lighthouses, it is about very much about uh, like the relationships between people and the the sea. So I'm going to count it for Springthon and I haven't read much but I'm loving it. It's literally uh, kind of the history of not lighthouses but lighthouses that are built on reefs or rocks out at sea. So they're not built on the mainland, they're built like right out at sea. Um, which obviously are really hard to build, particularly in like hundreds of years ago when they didn't have all the machinery and technology that we have now. So it's really interesting. Um, this guy actually ended up writing his thesis on them as, I want to say, a building conservationist. So he's very knowledgeable. Um, and so far, I'm really enjoying it. And it's a really pretty book. So I will, I will finish that. Um, oh, what I really want to talk about, um, I've got one more hard copy book. But first, I'll talk about Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton, an Aussie one that's been very popular. 
Um, I'm kind of late to the party, but I'm listening to it on audiobook and I'm really enjoying it. It took me, it's quite a long audiobook. It's maybe like 12 hours, not the longest, but reasonably long, maybe 15 hours. And it took me maybe two or three hours to get into it. I was like, oh, I'm not that into it, but everyone loves it. But I pushed through and it's really fun. It's narrated by Eli Bell, who at the start of the book is 11, now he's 13. Definitely not a children's book though. It's about his family who are drug dealers and then like various shenanigans uh, that continue from there. It's quite violent and upsetting at times, but it's also very, very warm, very funny. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. I look forward to reporting back to you when I finished. And the last one is another, I wouldn't even say this is middle grade. It's maybe like early middle grade or even junior fiction. It's Miss Rapp's Scots Girls by Elise Primavera, published by Penguin. And this is cute. This is just about um, these girls. So it's about a school, Miss Rapp Scott's school for children of very busy parents. So if your parents are very busy, they literally send you in a box with some cheese and crackers to this school and then... The, te the school is in a lighthouse and the teacher like looks after them and it's about all these girls who are it's actually sad in some ways it's about all these girls who are neglected by their parents in various forms like each of their parents are actually very rich and successful in different ways but haven't had time to look after their kids but then the kids go live in this lighthouse and learn like what it means to be a person so some of them have to learn basic things like brushing their teeth every day is good for you and other ones learn about sharing or you know going you know how to solve problem solving skills it's, it's like it's actually very cute um yeah i will hopefully finish this soon it's a library one and libraries are closed at the moment so obviously i don't have to return it till the libraries reopen so hopefully i will finish it at some point by the time the libraries reopen so there are all the books i'm in the middle of at the moment this is why i haven't finished anything in so long because i just keep starting new books but i'm committed to finishing like at least two of these plus the audio well, I think I'm gonna sneeze um, yeah I'm committed to finishing at least two of the hard copy books plus the audio before I start new ones so yeah let me know what you're reading or if you've been in a slump and we'll chat soon bye